Little Nicky is a 2000 American fantasy comedy film directed by Stephen Brill, written by Brill, Adam Sandler, and Tim Herlihy, and starring Sandler, Patricia Arquette, Harvey Keitel, Reese Ifans, Tommy Tiny Lister Jr., and Rodney Dangerfield. The film depicts the son of Satan and an angel as he tries to save his father and prevent his demonic brothers from taking over Earth. The film performed poorly financially and received negative reviews from critics. With his 10,000-year reign coming to an end and after torturing Adolf Hitler by shoving a pineapple up his anus, Satan must decide which of his three sons will succeed him as ruler of hell. Adrian is the most devious, Cassius is the cruelest, and Nicky is the kindest. Adrian and Cassius claim that Nicky's mother is a goat and torment him by controlling his body with their minds. Nicky has had a speech impediment and a disfigured jaw since Cassius hit him in the face with a shovel. Satan assembles his sons to tell them that they are not yet ready to succeed him as he will continue ruling hell. Angered by this decision, Adrian and Cassius travel to Earth to create a new hell by possessing religious and political leaders in New York City. As they leave, they freeze the entrance to hell, preventing more evil souls from entering and causing Satan to begin to disintegrate. To stop Adrian and Cassius, he sends Nikki to Earth with a silver flask that traps whoever drinks from it inside. Nikki has difficulty surviving on Earth and he is killed several times, landing in hell and returning to New York each time. While learning how to eat and sleep, he meets a possessed, talking bulldog named Mr. Beefy, rents an apartment with an actor named Todd, and falls in love with a design student named Valerie. Nikki encounters Adrian, but fails to capture him and scares Valerie away. Nikki then observes Cassius on television possessing the referee of a Harlem Globetrotters game. Nikki arrives at the game and successfully tricks Cassius into the flask. Satanist metalheads John and Peter swear loyalty to Nikki. That evening, Nikki apologizes to Valerie and they reconcile. The following day, Adrian possesses the chief of the NYPD and accuses Nikki of mass murder. Nikki has Todd kill him so he can go back to hell and ask his father for advice, but Satan has trouble hearing because his ears have fallen off, and his assistants are panicking because the deadline to capture Adrian and Cassius is approaching. Back on Earth, Nikki and his friends devise a plan to capture Adrian in a subway station, but Adrian discovers their trick in, in the ensuing fight. Grabs Valerie and dives onto the track as a train approaches, but Nikki throws her aside, leaving himself and Adrian to be killed by the train. Arriving in hell just minutes before midnight, Adrian begins taking over hell by pushing what remains of his father aside and sitting on the throne, rising to Central Park, and starting a riotous party. Meanwhile, Nikki wakes up in heaven as a reward for sacrificing himself, and meets his mother Holly, an angel who tells him that he can defeat Adrian with the inner light that he inherited from her. After she gives him a mysterious orb, he confronts Adrian in Central Park where he covers Henry Winkler and bees. Adrian appears to win the battle by transforming into a bat and locking Nikki in the flask. However, Nikki escapes from the flask and shatters the orb, causing Ozzy Osbourne to appear, bite Adrian's head off, and spit it into the flask. With his brothers captured, Nikki prepares to save his father. After he recovers Winkler and Bees to make sure he goes to hell, he and Valerie express their love for each other and she kills him. In hell, Satan regains his body and suggests Nikki stay with Valerie. One year later, Nikki and Valerie live in New York with their infant son who has demonic powers. John and Peter die in a plane crash and end up happily at hell as honored residents who have been given Nikki's old bedroom to party in. It opened at number 2 at the North American box office making 16 million US dollars in its opening weekend, behind Charlie's Angels, which was on its second consecutive week at the top spot. The film went on to earn $39. 5 million domestically and another $18. 8 million worldwide, bringing the total to $58. 3 million. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an approval rating of 21% based on reviews from 114 critics, with an average rating of 3. Nine-tenths. The site's consensus reads, despite the presence of a large, talented cast, the jokes in Little Nicky are dumb, tasteless, and not that funny. And Adam Sandler's character is grating to watch. On Metacritic it has a score of 38% based on reviews from 29 critics. Audiences polled by Cinema Score gave the film a grade B on scale of A to F comedian and former Mystery Science Theater 3000 host Michael J. Nelson named the film the worst comedy ever made. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times gave the film a score of two and a half stars out of four, describing Little Nicky as the best Sandler. Movie to date and the Nicky character as intriguing, while at the same time lamenting Sandler's lack of finesse and vocal quirks. 
In 2020, Evan Sothoff of Slash Film argued against the characterization of Little Nicky as being a blight on, Sandler's, filmography, writing that Sandler certainly never got this wild again, not in one of his own films at least. The film was nominated for five awards at the 21st Golden Raspberry Awards, including Worst Picture, Worst Actor, Worst Supporting Actress, Worst Director and Worst Screenplay. It lost in all categories to Battlefield Earth starring John Travolta. At the 2000 Stinkers Bad Movie Awards, the film received seven total nominations, Worst Picture, Worst Actor for Sandler. Worst On-Screen Couple for Sandler and That Unfunny Bulldog, Most Annoying Fake Accent for Sandler. Worst On-Screen Hairstyle for Sandler, Most Annoying Product Placement for Popeye's Chicken, Lost. To FedEx and Wilson in Castaway, and Most Unfunny Comic Relief for the Painfully Unfunny Talking Bulldog. As noted, its only win was for Most Annoying Fake Accent. Little Nicky was released on DVD and VHS on April 24, 2001. The DVD includes two audio commentaries, a special feature dedicated to rock-slash-metal music, the music video School of Hard Knocks by P.O.D., and deleted scenes. The soundtrack album, Little Nicky, was released October 31, 2000 through Maverick Records and featured a lineup that leaned heavily toward Maverick recording artists that included Deftones, Insolence, Muse, and Unloco. Some songs featured in the film, but excluded from the soundtrack, were Ladies' Night by Cool in the Gang, Runnin' with the Devil by Van Halen, Flying High Again, Mama, I'm Coming Home and No More Tears by Ozzy Osbourne, Does Anybody Really Know What Time It Is? by Chicago, Now. Or Never by Zebrahead, Everlong by Dave Grohl, Two of Hearts by Stacey Q, South Town and Rock the Party by P.O.D., Rock You Like a Hurricane by Scorpions, and Highway to Hell by ACDC. A Game Boy Color game was released based on the film shortly after its release. Thanks for watching.